Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How is everyone doing today? Great. Well, we are ready to start the program for this morning. Uh, my name is Jeremy Carlson, and I'm the Executive Director of the Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce. And I would like to welcome all of you to the 2024 State of the City Mayor's Breakfast. Oh, hey. I have just realized there are people in the audience I cannot look at, otherwise I will start laughing. <laughs> If everyone could please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, I would like to thank our sponsor for underwriting our event this morning. Uh, our sponsors for this morning are State Pleasant Hill, Republic Services, and Martinez Refining Company. Yay! And a continued thanks to our community impact partners for their continued support of the Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce and its programming. State Pleasant Hill, Downtown Pleasant Hill, Chevron, Republic Services, Martinez Refining Company, National University, Pacific Gas and Electric, and CNO Travel Group. I would like to take a moment to recognize those elected leaders that have braved what I thought was going to be bad weather this morning. It's just windy, but the weather and knowing that it's going to be probably nasty by the time we leave. Uh, but have come to Pleasant Hill to be with us today. As I acknowledge those that are here, I ask that you please hold your applause until the end, but I'm sure that won't happen, so just clap away. <laughs> Representing the office of Congressman Mark DeSaulnier, District, uh, District Director Ryan Thomas Brown. <laughs> Representing the office... <laughs> what? Oh, don't start, Ken. <laughs> Representing the Office of California State Assembly Member Timothy Grayson, Field Representative Angela Pack. <laughs> Contra Costa County Board, Super, Board of Supervisor for District 4, you may know him as my husband, Ken Carlson. <laughs> BART Board of Director Deborah Allen. Government and Community Relations Rep uh, for BART and Moraga Town Council Member Carrie Hillis. <laughs> Representing the Contra Costa Sanitation District, Emily Barnett. <laughs> President of the Contra Costa County Board of Education, Mike Maxwell. <laughs> President of the Mount Diablo Unified School Board, Linda Mayo. Superintendent of the Mount Diablo Unified School District, Dr. Adam Clark. And Concord City Council Member, Dominic Aliano. Now, I would like to acknowledge the appointed leaders of the Pleasant Hill Recreation, the elected and appointed leaders of the Pleasant Hill Recreation and Park District. Recreation and Park Board Chair, Sandy Vinson. Yeah. Vice Chair, Kui Tran. Board Member, Derek Wurst. Board Member, Bobby Glover. Board Member, Sandra Bonato. and the Recreation and Park General Manager, Michelle Lacey. And now for our city council. Of course, Mayor Matt Wren. Vice Mayor, Sue Nowak. 
Council member Tim Flaherty. Council member Zach Shess. Council member Alan Vinson. Our Pleasant Hill City Manager, Ethan Bendernagel. And Chief of Police of the Pleasant Hill Police Department, Scott Vermillion. Now, if I have misspoke your position, or have not called your name, my apologies. It was not done intentionally. And if there's any other elected officials in the room, I ask that you please stand for acknowledgement now. Oh, success. <laughs> At this time, I would like to recognize the folks that thought it was a good idea to have me on the microphone this morning, for any duration, the Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. Board Chair Marcos Montes of Comcast, who was not able to be here today. Secretary to the Board, Diane Cole of Spiegel Accountancy. <laughs> Treasurer to the Board, Cindy Tunalis of Travis Credit Union. Our immediate past board chair, Derek Knapp of Agent 2000. Our governmental affairs chair, Steve Lack. Our ambassador chair, Debbie Smith of the AHA Movement. Board member, Andre Obolinski of Main Street Automotive. Board member, Patricia Snowden of Stay Pleasant Hill. Board member Alex Codedad of Delphi Realty. And board member Claudia Luna of pg &E. The chamber has an amazing group of volunteers that we call ambassadors that help execute our events uh, and help onboard our new board member, our new members. Without these individuals, my job would be more complicated. Right at this time, I would like to acknowledge our ambassadors. Uh, Veronica Shears, <laughs> Jessica Dyer, Zara Murphy, Anna Kuzmo, Mike Kaysen, and Kelly Magoon. So often they fly under the radar but deserve to be recognized for the volunteer hours that they all put in. And lastly, my staff that works alongside of me daily. Uh, our member and event services rep, Tracy Wiseman. Our member services and communications rep, Tracy Olson. And of course our gatekeeper who sits and answers the phones for us because the phones are going crazy now, Debbie Sims. I wanted to talk about membership this morning. Today our membership currently sits at the highest amount uh, than immediately preceding the onset of COVID in, two th in 2020. In January of 2020, our membership rolls totaled 222 members. Although during the pandemic, our numbers did drop to as low as 188 members in January of 2021. As of today, our membership stands at 238 members and growing. This number reflects a general cleanup of membership uh, of our members uh, who were left on the rolls for various reasons. Some people had uh, moved away, uh, some people had left the chamber, but they actually were not um, released as, uh, as members. So we have a true number of membership uh, memberships at this time. And I want to sincerely thank all the individuals and businesses that trusted in the chamber to stick with us during the pandemic and uh, coming out of it, uh, even when things didn't look great, because we are back. Thank you. The first chamber events that we were able to bring back post-pandemic was our monthly network evening mixers. Uh, in 2022, uh, we had an average attendance of 15 people, which was good, because people were still nervous about coming out. And in 23, our attendance grew to an average of 29. Uh, that's an increase of 93%, and uh, month over month, we see our numbers growing exponentially for our, for our networking mixers, and so I'm very thrilled about that. Uh, currently, the interest in hosting our mixers has exceeded our calendar year of 2024 with all months filled, and 2025 is already starting to fill up. So if you're interested in hosting a mixer, please contact Tracy Wiseman, because like I said, 2025 is filling up. 
we are proud to report that once again, we're working to bring back our networking groups that unfortunately had to cease during COVID. By the end of quarter one of this year, we will have on the calendar the 680 Business Club, our Young Professionals Network for the young business entrepreneurs and employees of the general membership, and of course, the Young at Heart. And we are also in the process of reviving the Women's Networking Group, uh, a group that has not been hosted by the Chamber for almost a decade. So by the end of uh, March, all of these will be on the calendar and operating once again. Also at the end of quarter one, the Chamber is reviving the new member orientation event. This event, typically held quarterly for new members and a refresher for existing members, showcases and instructs how, do you, how our members can utilize the many ben benefits provided to them through the Chamber website, but also guides them through the networking and educational programs that the Chamber offers its members. More information will follow when it is on calendar. Our Lunch and Learns are also back, and we're proud to bring this back in March, on March 12, 2024. Uh, we are hosting uh, our, our first Lunch and Learn, uh, How to Leverage the Internet and Artificial Intelligence to Grow Your Business. This will be led by local web developer and tech expert Clifton M. Banugo of Clifton Creative Web. He will lay out the different ways you can push your business in the future using AI. I hope all those that are interested can attend. All these events will be in the weekly emails the Chamber Office sends out to its members and I encourage you all to watch for them and register for the various events that we have coming up in the future. And of course, we would be remiss not to talk about our ongoing special events that we have uh, throughout the year. Uh, this year, Pleasant Hill Art and Wine Music is returning once again in May uh, for the 18th and 19th. We are excited that we are bringing back an additional music stage for the listening pleasure of our attendees. The acoustic stage has not been at the event since before the pandemic, and bringing it back will give more variety of music styles, and we also hope it will draw a larger number of uh, attendees. Again, this year our premium wine tents will feature winemakers from the surrounding wine regions uh, uh, to Pleasant Hill uh, to showcase their wines, some of them from boutique wineries that cannot be found anywhere but at the wineries themselves. Our beer garden will also have some of the tried and true breweries that we've enjoyed in the years past, but we are talking and looking at and in discussions with a couple of new brewers uh, that uh, we're excited to bring on this year. And there also may be a few more surprises in store, but you may have to wait and see. And by the time you all get to the office this morning, you should all find in your inbox the official rollout of the event listing the different sponsorship abilities uh, this year and the description of the ways you can be involved. We hope you can all join us this year. So that email should probably be sending out right about 9 o'clock, so by the time we get to the office, it'll be there. Once again this year, we will hold our golf tournament. We will be returning to the Rossmore Golf Club this year, but on a new date, September 30th. Please mark your calendars for the date, and more documentation will come out as the spring, in the spring for registration and sponsorships. For the last three years, we have given a portion of the proceeds to the College Park Athletic Boosters to help fund the various high school sports, which at times go underfunded. Pleasant Hill loves their Falcons, and I think we all bleed purple, and we're excited to work with them again this year. And as you were uh, coming in today and uh, talking to the various people that are here, you might have seen some of us uh, who work with the Chamber with a new badge. Uh, the Chamber turns 70 this year. In 2024, the Pleasant Hill Chamber of Commerce, as I said, is celebrating its 70 year anniversary of being part of the Pleasant Hill business community. Throughout this year, we will celebrate the Chamber and its history. It is surprising how much material the Chamber holds on to from years past, and we look forward to sharing some of its history with all of you. More information will follow throughout the year and the various ways we will be celebrating 70. The Chamber, like I said, is busier than ever, and we have all of you to thank for that. More and more events are being added to our calendar weekly. Our calendar is filled with mixers, ribbon cuttings, uh, lunch and learns, and uh, we made a point of putting at your tables, along with your program this morning, a list of the events that are happening in or for the Chamber in the month of February, so that you all have those. Uh, and all that information can be found on the Pleasant Hill Chamber website. 
but we wanted to make sure you had it, and we hope that you can attend as much of these as possible. Lastly, as I end the chamber presentation, I want to give all of you a personal invite to our next mixer on February 8th. We are being hosted by Royal Blue Fitness, a new gym in Pleasant Hill. The owner, Randy Nguyen, joined the chamber in 2022, and this was the first date that, he had that we had available for him to host a mixer. I am also excited to announce that Randy has agreed to be part of the team kicking off our Young Professionals Network. I hope you can all make it to the mixer on the evening of the 8th. Thank you. At this time, I would like to bring to the stage the CEO of State Pleasant Hill, Patricia Snowden. Patricia took over the management of the Tourism Improvement District in the spring of 2022, and she is here today to talk about State Pleasant Hill and how its operations help improve the city of Pleasant Hill. Trish. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to look at all the faces. Um, Pleasure to be here. Thanks for uh, inviting me to speak today. Uh, Mayor Wren and, and Jeremy, thanks for putting me on the calendar today. I want to um, just tell you a little bit about State Pleasant Hill. As Jeremy mentioned, we took over in 2022 as the Management Association for the Pleasant Hill Tourism Improvement District. Um, so you might ask yourself, well, what the heck is that and what do they really do? I'm gonna talk a little bit about that and I'm gonna talk about what we've done and then what we have coming up uh, this coming year and how you can partner with us to, to bring uh, visitors to Pleasant Hill because ultimately that's our goal. Uh, so we are a destination management organization which is primary function is to attract visitors, pretty simple, right? For the purpose of enhancing local economy through not only room nights, we are uh, uh, you know, funded by the hotel assessment but honestly, Everybody that comes to Pleasant Hill is not going to just stay at a hotel, right? They're going to eat, they're going to get gas, they're going to shop at the stores. So it really does encompass um, all visits to, to Pleasant Hill. So what we do, we bring together organizations that serve all aspects of the visitor experience. Lodging, attractions, restaurants, retailers. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're trying to tell a story that makes our community stand out and makes people want to come to Pleasant Hill. Uh, when they come to the Bay Area. Um, typically, destinations that have a strong marketing organization are very competitive. They have increased visibility, better economic performance than those without one. I'd like to introduce our, our board members uh, are here. If you could just stand real quick, I won't do indi you know, individual, but Tracy Collins is our board chair. She's the general manager at the Residence Inn. Uh, Bradley Weber is our uh, actually treasurer uh, he's the general manager at the Hyatt House. Jay Rana is our general manager at Senesta, and he is our secretary. Uh, Tony Dungar, who's with the Pleasant Hill Inn, is not here today, but he's also on our board. Uh, Zach Seal, uh, economic development director, and then Jeremy Carlson uh, is also on our board. So uh, thank you guys very much. Um, you know, we couldn't, couldn't obviously do it without you, and you guys are uh, very valuable. So our assessed hotels, um, are listed there. We have seven hotels uh, in Pleasant Hill and um, one to come. Our staff, we're just a little tiny little staff of two people. It's myself and then Viola Nube is our Vice President of Sales and Marketing. So how do we do it? Through social media, digital campaigns, advertising, brochures and trade shows. I mean we're a marketing organization so we use all the avenues available to us uh, to tell the story of, of Pleasant Hill. And how to partner with us. I mean, that's really the, one of the main reasons I like to get up in front of people and talk is to ask for partnership. I mean, we want to tell your story if you're a business. If you know a business, we want to tell your story. We want to post about you on social media. We want to uh, promote you when we go to trade shows. We want you to be in our visitor guide if you, at every table I put our brand new visitor guide that we just created last year. We want you in there. Right now, we really try to do our best and put as many businesses as we can in there. What I would love is for businesses to be knocking on my door and say, get me in there. I want to be in there. I want to be part of the story you tell about Pleasant Hill. So 
and, and just, you know, keeping in mind, you know, well, who's really going to see that? Who, you know, if you look at, you know, we partner with San Francisco Travel. Two million plus people see that. We're in their newsletters. Visit California, 23 million. We partner with them. We're in their, we're in their visitor guide for the whole state of California. We do a monthly newsletter with those, um, you know, partners, over two million. Website, we get about 43 thousand annual visitors, and then social media, we've got about 42,000. So it really uh, it pays, I think, for, for any business to really partner with us. Um, and it doesn't cost anything. So <laughs> we're here to tell the story. So, you know, we, we want to uh, have you partner with us. Um, just some marketing campaigns. You know, we create annual campaigns that highlight Pleasant Hills offerings, hopefully to increase the travel interest. Um, Pet friendly, uh, we, right now we've got a, a, a pet friendly campaign. Our hotels in town uh, and many businesses in town welcome pets and you'd be amazed how the um, numbers add up for people that love to travel with their pets. I Belong Here, another campaign that shows that everybody belongs here in Pleasant Hill and we're gonna tell that story. Uh, outdoor adventure, of course, family friendly and then culinary are the stories that we're telling about Pleasant Hill. Community <coughs> programs, I mean, we've, we've got a, a pass right now, a, a Pleasant Hill pass that's I Love Pleasant Hill. There's about 40 businesses on there that are being promoted. Uh, I belong here, we're working on that uh, right now. Uh, Future Leaders Program, we work with DVC and partner uh, with internships uh, and mentorship. We had two interns uh, that were DVC students that worked with us for six months uh, this year. So, uh, and we're involved in the, um, you know, the business program, partnering with them. Beth Arman is here with, with DVC today. Thanks for coming. Um, and then just some sponsorships. I mean, we've been sponsoring these events off the grid, Pleasant Hill Parks, Art and Wine. So you can see the list there, and we're, we're happy to do that and you know, want to be part of the community as well. So what we've done, uh, just a couple of successes you know, and, and some, some numbers that you know, I'd love to highlight, and we don't have 2023 numbers yet, so uh, you know, we'll be working on that. But these are Pleasant Hill visitor spending numbers, so accommodations, so hotels, and it shows both 21 and 22. Art and entertainment. I think the numbers are a little astounding. I mean, I think most people wouldn't think this is just Pleasant Hill. So these are, uh, you know, visitor spending. So uh, for us to promote visitors to come, it, you can see it, it pays, right? So and everybody benefits from that. Um, and then just total impact on the side there, 99.6 million, 730 total jobs estimated in the hospitality, tourism uh, industries in Pleasant Hill. Just very proud of the, uh, a campaign that we ran with Visit California and our partners at Visit Walnut Creek, Visit Concord, and Visit Tri-Valley. It was a campaign after COVID had started and um, you know it's, it was called the What If Campaign. It generated over $1 million for hotel stays in Pleasant Hill and number of room nights from that campaign was about, you know, just over 6,000. So it's things like that, you know, that we can do and partner to bring business here. So just a couple of shots of some community engagement that we've been involved with this year. Off the grid, Haunted Trail, uh, Pleasant Hill Parks, we're helping promote that on our socials and through our, uh, you know, for, through our uh, platforms. Art, Wine and Music, sponsor with that. Warriors Watch Party, 4th of July, Light Up the Night, Jewish Film Festival and DVC. There's a picture of our lovely interns, which were so fun to work with. Um, and then just some new collateral I already mentioned. There's a, a you know, the visitor guide is on, on your table. Um, if you want, we have tons of visitor guides. If you want them for your office, if you want them for, you know, for anything. We, we take those to trade shows, we pass those out, we mail them, we get requests for those on our, on our website. People still want a paper copy. Um, I had somebody tell me once that they put that, a, a resident of Pleasant Hill, and I can't remember who it was, and 
maybe you're here, <laughs> said they put that in their guest room on, their, on, the, on the bedside table and that's a, a nice little magazine for their guests to see what could they do in and around Pleasant Hill. So I thought that was a, a cute idea uh, for that. But anyway, all of these uh, collateral are things that we've uh, created this year and we've got lots of, um, of things that we take out to trade shows and uh, partner on specific events. Uh, with these various collaterals. So looking forward, what are we doing in 2024? Um, strategic plan, we're, uh, you know, five, five years, the Tourism Improvement District is uh, renewed on a five-year basis. So we're in our third year, we're going into our third year right now. So we're kind of working that plan. Uh, we're working on a brand refresh this year. Uh, consumer campaign is it's a dog's world. Uh, and we, our diversity campaign, which I already mentioned, the I Belong Here, uh, new collateral you already saw, and then we've got partnerships, you know, going with Live Nation, so we can get some of the concert goers uh, in, into our hotels, DVC, Pleasant Hill Rec and Park. And that's all I have for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Trish. It is a true pleasure working and collaborating with her on our various events and working to make Pleasant Hill the great place that we all call home. I would now like to welcome to a stage a person I've gotten to know in the last several years, working on volunteer projects like Art, Wine, and Music, but also uh, maybe some time hanging out at Sea Ranch. Uh, so it's with great pleasure right now that I bring up to the stage the 2024 Board Chair of the Pleasant Hill Recreation and Park District, Sandy Vinson. Thank you, Jeremy. As Jeremy said, my name is Sandy Vinson. I am the current chair of the Pleasant Hill Recreation and Park District. It is a pleasure to update you about the district and what is in store for 2024. Pleasant Hill Rec and Park makes life better today and for years to come. The district's vision is to be leaders in providing wow experiences for all every single day. As you may be aware, Pleasant Hill Rec and Park is a special district which is dedicated to providing park and recreation services to its residents. The district was created in 1951, 10 years earlier than the city of Pleasant Hill. The district operates and maintains over 269 acres of parkland, which includes 11 parks, two pools, two community centers, the Senior Center, the Teen Center, Rogers Ranch Heritage Center, trails, and a lot of open space. And by the way, this summer is the 60th anniversary of the Dolphin Swim Team. Do we have any dolphin families here? All right. And in the words of some of the Dolphin Swim Team members, we have fun and we swim fast. I would like to again acknowledge the 2024 board members that are here. Vice Chair Kui Tran was unable to attend, but we have directors uh, Derek Wurst, Bobby Glover, and Sandra Bonato right here. And the board meets on the second and fourth Thursdays um, of the month at the district offices on Gregory Lane. We have been back to in-person meetings since October 2022, <coughs> and meeting information can be found on our website. And we'd like to, you know, we don't get very much, um, we don't have very many people there, but you're always welcome to come to our board meetings in, and, uh, in person. I would also like to acknowledge General Manager Michelle Lacey and staff members who are present this morning and the other staff that were unable to attend. They are the most creative, resourceful, and inspiring individuals who make all of the magic come together in the district. And thank you to them. Let's see. The park experience, we have a lot of park experiences in the district. Uh, with 11 parks, that's a lot. Open spaces and trails, they're just are a lot of different options to get outside and enjoy that wow experience. 
whether enjoying a get-together in the park, playing with friends, or appreciating and exploring our open spaces, we encourage our residents and, and visitors to take advantage of the different park amenities. And there are a lot of different amen amenities out there. Some stats from that we um, have on, on our 2023 park visitors. We had over 600,000 visitors to our parks in 2023. That's quite a bit. And you can see the breakdown of the different um, parks. All but one of the district's parks are within the Pleasant Hill city limits. The yellow highlight, you can't see that very well on this slide, um, shows the city boundary. And we actually, the district exceeds the city boundaries in a couple of spaces. One you might recognize is Brookwood Park. Um, with only a few large events during the year, the majority of the visits are from families and individuals that are accessing our public spaces for play, exercise, and access to nature. The 2024 Capital Improvement Program, staff will be Im implementing, implementing park and facility improvement projects with earmarked Capital Improvement Program CIP funds. Some of the SIP projects include a new bathroom at Roger Smith Park, which the design is, is um, and you'll, the rendering there is, looks a little bit like um, Rogers Ranch building. That was one of the things we wanted to do, is um, kind of tie it in there. Improved stair access and amenity refurbishments at Dinosaur Hill Park, the development of a new natural all abilities playground at Chilpan Single Park. <laughs> We've had one public meeting requesting input on the Chill Pensingo design, and there will be another one scheduled for February. So if you are interested in that, uh, keep an eye out for announcements on that particular meeting that will be coming up um, sometime in February. Another project is providing shade sales over the All Abilities Playground at Pleasant Oaks Park and a creek boardwalk replacement path project at Shannon Hills Park. So those will be getting, you know, things will be happening there in 2024. So overall, 2024 promises to be an exciting year for growth, change, and improvement as we work to fulfill our vision to provide all of these wow experiences every day and our commitment to play for all. We could go on, there's a very big list, but we'll talk about a few. Our parks need updating to continue to provide a quality park experience into the future. Future improvements needed include the development of a new park next to the Pleasant Hill Library. You've all seen that um, kind of a field area with a sign that says, you know, coming soon or hopefully coming soon. But that's something that we want to get going with. Um, the schoolhouse and the Winslow Center properties, and our 70-year-old Pleasant Hill Park community pool. 70-year-old 70, pool, that's, keep that in mind. That's something that, you don't, you know, pools get to be 70 years old and uh, they've, achieved, they've achieved senior status, for sure. In 2023, it was in the, I think, September timeframe, the district gathered important feedback from the community residents through surveys, phone calls, in-person listening sessions to help prioritize park and facility improvements. For instance, pickleball was identified by many, especially seniors, as a future amenity that would enhance outdoor activity for many. How many of you currently play pickleball? Yeah. Okay, so, you know, we may, we may need you at, at a future time. Identifying future funding, which may include a bond measure, is critical to being able to realize these larger projects. Current district funding. Pleasant Hill Rec and Park District enters 2024 on a very strong financial footing, finishing the 2023 fiscal year with a surplus and healthy reserves. Nice place to be in. The district operations and management are funded by an almost even mix of property taxes and fees and charges for activities and rentals. 
Capital improvements are funded by the operating surplus, the park dedication fees. We recently received $118,000 in fees from the city of Pleasant Hill for eight units on Taylor Boulevard. Thank you very much. State grants, around $300,000, which helped to fund the Rogers Ranch Park restroom and ACA, ADA project. We also are working on donations. We're working with Pleasant Hill Community Foundation to assist with the Chilpancingo Park project. The ADA improvements district-wide are estimated to total $3 million and will be phased over a number of years. Ways the district makes life better. You can see that, that photo is some of our teen center participants. The Pleasant Hill Rec and Park District Preschool, we'll start with the younger kids, has been encouraging the love of learning since 1973. And our preschool establishes a foundation for a child's future, a child's future education. Come grow with us in those programs. The philosophy, philosophy of the preschool program is a child who is playing is a child who is learning. We have a lot of experienced teachers who encourage the individual confidence, self-esteem, and social skills that children need to be happy and successful. The teen scene offers a wide range of activities designed specifically for teens, from our popular after-school program and extreme camps to art, enrichment, and we have an online driver's ed class. We provide children of all ages places where they can play either indoors or outdoors. The district continu continually strives to host events that will build positive and lasting memories for families. We've got a family pajama dance party coming up on February 9th. That same night, there's a kids night out event at the teen center. There's a polar bear party. It's a new event coming February 16th and it's not playing with polar bears. It's uh, <laughs> an activity at the pool, um, kind of like a polar, boar, polar bear plunge in a smaller way. We have the egg sighting egg hunt coming up prior to Easter, and of course, the very popular Tinkers and Thinkers event that we partner with the Pleasant Hill Library coming back again in September of 2024. We have a lot of ways that we continue to make lives better for our seniors. Join the Senior Center Club if you haven't already done so. Annual membership is open to anyone 50 years and over. I know a lot of you are under that, but there's a lot here that are over that. Um, it's $20 a year. It's, it's quite a deal, and you can join regardless of residency. Members receive a monthly newsletter, and there's always discounts on events and classes. You don't have to be a member to the senior club to come to the senior center. There are many classes, programs, and activities for seniors to choose from, from exercise and fitness, daily nutritional meals, lifelong learning and social events, and there's also resources for longer, healthy, independent living. Watch for information coming up on the May event, Laugh, Love, Learn, Senior Forum, and Resource Fair. The board, of the board of Directors Play for All Equity and Inclusion Policy was approved in 2022. In October of 2023, the board approved a three-year diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging strategic plan that will serve as a roadmap to internalize and operationalize DEIB best practices throughout our, throughout our agency. And you can see that the, the district has been working on creating an organizational culture of ongoing learning and cultural humi humility, and also creating an environment where participants feel a sense of belonging. Staff will begin this DEIB plan implementation in 2024, and will continue to spearhead this important effort over the next three years. We have many community partners, and we want to thank them partners, sponsors, clubs, and volunteers. We are so fortunate to have the Rogers Ranch Heritage Center under our umbrella. Rogers Ranch not only supports Pleasant Hill heritage and history, 
but also provides educational and nutritional classes as well as community events. And if you haven't been to one of those, I encourage you. It's, it's, um, they're a lot of fun. Thanks also to the Chamber of Commerce, the City of Pleasant Hill, the Pleasant Hill Police Department, the, the Lions Club of Pleasant Hill, the Rotary Club of Pleasant Hill, and the Pleasant Hill Community Foundation, who are all valued partners. Together, we work to make Pleasant Hill the best place to live, work, and play. And in closing, this year, 2024, is all about posit positive experiences and good vibes. Parks make life better. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sandy. <clears throat> it's time for the main event. <laughs> Matt Wren's career in service to the Pleasant Hill community began in 2008. Joining the Chamber of Commerce, working his way from ambassador to board member before being awarded Business Person of the Year in 2011. And uh, just a side note, he also has uh, helped orchestrate and manage the chamber when we had some rough days. So Matt, thank you. Uh, his passion for service grew as he took roles within the Contra Costa Community College District Governing Board, the Pleasant Hill Education Commission, the Rotary Club, and the Pleasant Hill YMCA Advisory Board, all the while still finding time to coach and referee youth soccer. As a member of the City Council since 2016, Matt has been a strong voice for Pleasant Hill residents, representing the city to the League of California Cities, MCE Clean Energy, and the School District Task Force. He continues to work in service to the community, making Pleasant Hill an inclusive, welcoming, and safe place for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, for the State of the City Address, Mayor Matt Wren. And those that know me, we gotta get a selfie in first before we do it. <laughs> All right, there you go, good job. I think we're gonna break the internet later on. Um, well, welcome. Uh, just before I get rolling here, I do wanna acknowledge uh, another guest in the room, uh, we call him Mayor Emeritus, Michael Harris. Dr. Michael Harris is with us here today, and thank you for your service. As I go into the slides here, none of this would be possible without a great team behind us, and I'm going to ask all of our city staff to stand up, and I'm going to read through your names, and uh, so you can all be acknowledged for all your contributions. Uh, we have Janet Colson, our city staff, go ahead and stand up, don't be shy, I know you Always like to fly behind the scenes and don't like recognition. Uh, Janet Colson, city attorney. Leon Carr, city clerk. Juanita Davalos, administrative analyst. Jeff Gillette, community relations manager. Uh, and James, our public works manager. Anathan, Kenya Grossrum, city engineer. I almost got that in there. I might need a drink of water after that. Uh, Zach Seal, our economic development manager. Jeff Simons, our chief building official. Scott Vermillion, our chief of police. Erica Mitchell, our chief human resources officer. Troy Fujimoto, our city planner. So thank you very much for all you do behind the scenes. I, I don't know who is watching City Hall, so I better go fast so we can get this done by nine. Um, in case anyone calls, they might get a, the answering machine. All right, um, let me get rolling through this. All right, uh, so taking a look back, um, first also too, I know our council has already been acknowledged, but I just wanted to uh, thank former Mayor Tim Flaherty for his leadership through 2023. Um, if you've been to any of our meetings or saw any things, it was quite a contentious uh, meetings at some point, and he handled them with civility, dignity, and respect. Um, and so kudos to you, uh, Tim Flaherty. Okay, um, I'll call this the broccoli of the presentation of the dinner meal. Um, so we'll get it out of the way and we can get into some of the fun stuff. But. Uh, uh, the city is going to district-based elections at the end of 2024. Um, it is now cut up into five different maps. And any of you who watched the process, I thought it was a very uh, participative uh, process with lots of input and town halls and things like that. So um, good news. Uh, we had a, a February 1st deadline, but it should be online by the end of today. So don't check it now. But you, people are like, well, what district am I in? Where do I live? Who's going to be my representative? Uh, PleasantHillCA.org slash my district. And uh, we didn't have to pay a consultant for that title, so we just came up with it. So that's good. 
Um, to help assist with the district-based elections, uh, we also ad added additional Dropbox locations. So those in the primaries coming up here, hopefully everybody gets out to vote. Um, you know, voter apathy is an all-time high. So hopefully people will register to vote and make your voices heard in the ballot box. So we hope to see people out there coming up there for the primaries. All right, planning. Where's my planning people? I know they're over there. They're all still looking in their brochures and reading through the booklets over there. Uh, but we're very excited. Uh, completed the 2040 general plan update. Uh, we also completed and received certification for our housing element, which any of you who follow city stuff, it is quite an ordeal. And there's a whole, you could spend an hour like, commentating on that in the process and what it has to go through. But kudos to uh, Council Member Nowak and then at the time Council Member Ken Carlson who did, I don't even know how many online town halls, community forums, uh, seemed like I, I lost count after 20. So it, it, it was quite a lot. So, um, and then also our planning commission and council to go through all that stuff. So we appreciate that. Uh, great stuff going on around. Um, uh, Katina Jacks should be opening up here. Uh, we've got a new school coming into the old JFK building, Sonner Creek Academy. Downtown Plaza is gonna get a refresh and revamp coming up. Uh, some new housing and ADUs, so that's gonna be coming up. And ordinance amendments, which are always exciting and fun as part of city governance. Public works, kudos to Ann James and her crew. Um, we got a big storm coming in tonight and we do a lot of preemptive stuff. I mean, anytime you get the, whatever they call it, the Pineapple Express or the, you know, whatever the big, big storms they like to talk about on this, you know, you can only do so much. Uh, but 1,500 miles, 1,500 storm drains and inlets have been maintained each day. Uh, 1.2 miles of city-owned creeks are maintained. We do have three sandbag stations. If anyone needs free sandbags, we have those available to people. Um, and then we're on call for emergency response, flooding, drown, uh, down trees, or drowning trees. I don't know, we'll save them if they need it, but, uh, and uh, utility lines. Uh, public works, streets, uh, a lot of things that you probably, some of your neighborhoods have been uh, repaved and done. If not, they're coming real soon. Our average index is 71, which is really good for a city of our size uh, and done like that. So kudos to that. A lot of those are done with a Measure K, SB1, and gas tech funds not coming out of our general revenue. So as we get more of these grants and other funds from outside our normal revenue sources, we pour it right back into the city doing uh, street improvements and stuff like that. Public works. Not super excited, but I know the chief is pretty happy here in our public works. Is a, uh, we're getting a whole new uh, tank replacement uh, so we can uh, refill, and I know Ann's pretty excited about that. Our old tank was very, very old. Uh, they couldn't even get parts to replace it anymore, so that's a little hard. So uh, we got that project coming, and we're using some of our rescue uh, COVID funds for that. All right, other fun stuff the city does is uh, <laughs> Working on a replacement for the Diablo Vista water systems, um, new linear feet, and our construction was complete. Uh, so those on the Diablo Vista water system, we can see how old those pipes are looking, and it only took probably a minor earthquake or something that would rupture those, and so now we have all new pipes. All right, more engineering stuff. Fun stuff happened around the city. So many of you have been downtown. Um, some of the old trees, they were uh, dying. Uh, we actually had one fall down the night before the 4th of July. Thankfully, it didn't hurt anyone uh, at the parade or the parade route. So I uh, came up with a plan, uh, better variety of trees, uh, more drought tolerant. Uh, also did the, the scaping around the trees so they can be more vibrant and better safety downtown. So if you haven't been downtown, please go downtown and check out that project. It's a great one. Um, for those who like to keep score, they're called Bradford pear trees. If Don't ask me later, but that's what they are. All right. Uh, building, uh, Jeff is here, and kudos to Jeff in his uh, division. One of the first in the area to do electronic uh, permitting and online submittal forms and all those kind of things. So kudos to that. Um, long term, it's going to save hundreds of thousand dollars of staff time and hours, um, but it also is more efficient and people can submit their plans online. So if you're you know, contractor working on a project all day and you want to submit your permits at night, you can submit that and they're all then and you can do that convenience. So uh, people like to like that portion about our city. Uh, fun stuff. Look at all those old blueprints and plans and all those kind of things. We're actually going all digital to all that to increase transparency. Uh, people will be able to view all the archives rather than going into the whole big archive room 
and getting all that accomplished. So another efficiency that we are as a city in efforts to be even more transparent and more modern and accessible, uh, you'll be able to see all these files uh, virtually soon, which is very helpful. All right, I think I saw Patrick out there. Where are you, Patrick? Yeah, Patrick, give it up for Patrick at the library. I, I told Patrick when he did the presentation to our council, you know, we can build you you know, we can build you a house, but it's not a home without the people inside. And I truly believe that about you and your staff at the library. Anytime you go in there, except for when middle school's out. But, uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's always a vibe, and uh, it's just such a great place to be, and it's welcoming and inclusive for everybody. It's for, there's something there for everybody. So kudos to you. I'm going to talk you up a little bit because I know you've been busy. I'm surprised you aren't bald like me at this point after all this stuff going on. But these are 2023 numbers. Uh, 271,520 visitors in our little library uh, issued brand new 6,448 new library cards. So these are new people getting out there and to read. Uh, here's the kind of bragging point, I guess, that Patrick likes around. Is, uh, we're in first place. Not that we're competitive, but we are. Pleasant Hill's the best. Um, we're in first place by more than 28% better than the second place library in Contra Costa County and more than double the average library. And part of that is now ebooks. So 138,000 ebooks have been checked out too. So we're definitely keeping modern with all that great stuff. Uh, and our library also won an award for the 2023 American Public Works Association Exceptional Performance Award for Sustainability. So, like Kermit the Frog, it's not easy being green, but we're green over at the library. All right, here we go. The Cliff Note, city budget, right? If you haven't fallen asleep, get some coffee. We're going to go into some numbers here. Um, but to be respectful of everyone's time, I may kind of go a little faster on this stuff, but it's not, it's not less important. I just want to make sure we get you out of here on time. Um, but just kudos to our accounting staff. Uh, we did a, receive a certificate of excellent achievements for financial reporting about the transparency, the efficacy, and the accuracy of our documents. Um, so kudos to all those that our city is being run right and being run the correct way. Uh, so just to give you that confidence that we even are being recognized um, by the Government fin uh, Finance Officers Association for our excellent work there. So kudos uh, to staff for that. Um, we do have, yay, biannual budget. Yes, fantastic. We need a budget to run the city. We appreciate you shopping around Pleasant Hill. Tax dollars help for us. If you have friends, you don't want them in your house, have them stay in the hotels, they pay tax. No, it's kidding. <laughs> They're always welcome at the house. Don't worry about that. Um, our biannual budget is great. You can see Pleasant Hill is a little more unique. Um, most of our revenue, a lot of people are like, oh, I pay property taxes, which is true. That's great. Uh, that's about 24% of our revenues. Uh, sales tax is 30%. So we actually get more uh, from the sales tax side. So a little different than some cities who are more heavy property tax based. Uh, this includes our Measure K. Our 2023 numbers are not fully audited yet. So these are um, but we did approve a budget, which is always good. Sometimes in Washington, D.C., they have a hard time figuring that out. Um, so we do have a budget in place, and we're going forward. Uh, fund bar charts, because we're, uh, we're tired of pie charts now. So here's a, a general fund balance. So we do have money coming in, so that's great. The bottom blue line is we try as a council to maintain a $10 million reserve, just in case for those rainy days. And thankfully, through some uh, creative stuff with staffing and um, cautious, very conservative uh, projections. We were able to survive through COVID uh, and maintain those reserves. Uh, general fund reserve balance, um, still at 10.6 million where we are right now. Uh, this is the big problem for pretty much most cities out there and just want to touch base on it. And it's got unfunded pension liability. Uh, so we honored the promises made years and years ago. Uh, there's a whole nother conversation about how CalPERS does their uh, calculations and estimates and contributions and if you ever want to buy uh, council member Sue Noack a drink she'll go into all that for you and uh, <laughs> well deserved on uh, trying to figure all this so help somebody with an MBA on your council so it's great um, all right so we did get some money what did we do with it uh, we've extended library hours because obviously you can see how busy it is and we want to extend that opportunity to more uh, more people uh, we have a core homeless program which works with partnership with the county, uh, with social workers trying to uh, work with our unhoused population and get them into proper care um, for that. 
um, continuing, uh, we use those funds to continue uh, with the crossing guards at our elementary schools, uh, the underground storage tank, Measure K, uh, we thank the residents of Pleasant Hill for passing this, and it's turned into street repaving, storm maintenance, sidewalk, bike, pedestrian paths, um, and then the construction of the Pleasant Hill Library and ongoing operations. Bless you. All right, economic development. Zach Seals, great stuff here in the chamber. Uh, we have a program called Perks, Pleasant Hill Perks. We sold 5,428 cards. What the program is, is let's say you bought a $100 uh, Perks card. Uh, the city, using the ARPA funds that we're using, would do a 50% uh, additional to that. So we give you an additional $50 uh, for those funds. So in essence, you'd have $150 to spend in uh, Pleasant Hill businesses. And it, over the program, we've, uh, $320,803 have been redeemed in Pleasant Hill retail, restaurant, and personal care businesses. So that's quite a, a good commitment from the council um, and working with to giving money back directly into the community coming out of COVID. Uh, we have 68 businesses. I see some of the business owners in the room here, so we appreciate you being part of our community. And hopefully you recognize a few familiar faces from you patronizing their businesses. We have President Hill Perks videos. If you haven't seen them online or through your social media, you'll see more of them coming up. Uh, kudos to our previous mayor, uh, Tim Flaherty, in the upper left corner uh, for help pushing that, doing the interviews. I believe that was probably off the grid or something one night. Uh, so thank you for doing that and help promoting the program. Uh, through this program, we also gave $7,500 to 39 different businesses uh, to help them improve their websites, online ordering, social media, uh, redo photos, business videos, and graphic design. So trying to help more and more people are going to virtual platforms to do their shopping, and we really want to help those monies uh, stay here in Pleasant Hill. So that's uh, the grant program, still going. People just talking us up how much they love us and uh, <laughs> how great it is, so that's fantastic. All right, grand openings. Oh man, it was great to have a hardware store back in town, so Ace Hardware is back. That was a whole another conversation for another time. Uh, we have some other businesses rolling in. Batter and Icing, Magoo's Bar and Grill's under new ownership, and did a refresh, Morgan Territory downtown. Uh, looks like it's doing great, Paris Baguette and Sourdough and Company and a few others. Coming soon in the very near future, uh, you'll see action on Katina Jacks. Um, and then the downtown plaza, whole refresh around a lot of areas downtown. So you'll be seeing that coming up and you heard it here first, folks. Some of it, you've heard it for a while, but now they're actually really gonna do it. They promised this time. Okay, um, Off the Grid is always a great event. For the community, um, always good to sample different foods you haven't tried before, but the great part is it brings so many different people from all different parts of our community together. The city hall grass is pretty packed. Uh, young families, you know, older families, it's just everybody coming together, neighbors, it's, it's kind of a really cool vibe. Um, and you get different types of food every week, so it's kind of cool to build community. So that's coming back in uh, April. I just want to give a shout out and kudos to our Pleasant Hill Police Department, our men and women who serve us every day. Um, Pleasant Hill statistics, we're gonna go into some of the crime. Crime is down, um, thanks to their hard work and efforts. Um, you're looking at person crimes in 2022, we're 84, and 2023, we're 64. Um, property crimes, 1549 to 1505. A large portion of those, unfortunately, are in our retail establishments along 680. Uh, you, you've seen it in the news everywhere, retail thefts, people just run in, grab stuff, and run out the door. Uh, it's not unique to Pleasant Hill, uh, but our police department works very proactively with the retailers to try to work on preventive measures, but if you just every time see those videos, people just don't even care. They just walk in, grab whatever they can, and walk right out the door. Um, we have some uh, very proud things. Uh, some of our food, uh, Detective Stephen Vong uh, coordinated a federal seizure of, one, of 12 million in cryptocurrency. Uh, so we do a lot of stuff on cyber crimes too here in Pleasant Hill, so kudos to that. Continues to be re recognized for that. Uh, a lot of you saw in the um, media and through the Sherman Acres incident, uh, I just wanted to reinforce uh, kudos to our, our chief and the men and women that were there. A uh, very contentious situation. Everybody went home alive that night and it's not an easy situation when you're dealing with a mental health crisis and having to deal with de-escalization de techniques, which most people aren't familiar with. It may not be fully understood why or how some of those techniques are done, 
but this is an example of how this is a, a successful outcome. And I know the, the chief has been carrying that and it's pretty heavy on you, but I just want to thank you for your service and the successful that everybody went home that All right, more stuff. Um, we do have the prevent and retail stuff. Uh, patrols officers um, took 17 stolen, illegal, or possessed firearms off the street. And then several officers are trained in procedures in Operation Lifesaver. Uh, public safety outreach, our kudos to our, our outreach community. Uh, this is a national night out. Uh, this is coffee with the cop. Uh, looks like the torch run fun run there at the bottom and uh, upper right. I think that was Officer Botello. Uh, the little kid actually got away from his mother and um, was just wandering and he found him and he just sat down and talked with him until the mom could arrive. Uh, so that just shows uh, the level of care of our policing, you know, just he was just hanging out until the mom could show up and the kid was pretty freaked out. So kudos there. Um, Pleasant Hill, community engagement. Um, we try to be on the forefront and be very cognizant and proactive of what the world is like today. Um, we did our first ever Pleasant Hill United Against Hate Unity Walk uh, to march against hate during hate week. Uh, we held uh, community conversations on diversity, equity, inclusion at the library, uh, another great use where we can have kind of a town hall format uh, to facilitate conversations. Uh, so kudos to that. Um, there is a pledge in Pleasant Hill. It's a city website slash everyone belongs. As a citizen or a business owner, you can take that pledge um, to make sure that you pledge that everyone does belong here in Pleasant Hill. A great community event uh, that is very popular. Thousands of people every year is light up the night. Uh, during the holidays, which is always fun, and the weather holds off long enough, we get that in. Um, we also get a lot of thanks for our sunset concerts at the lake. Uh, it comes, starts on Memorial Weekend every other Sunday, and it ends on Labor Day weekend. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, I know they touched base on it, but the Art, Wine, and Music Festival is coming up, so we hope to see you downtown again as well. Rec and Park, give a plug for your Blues and Brews Festival. It's always a great one. Bring people to Pleasant Hill. Uh, 20th Annual Community Service Day. Can't believe it's 20, 20 years already. Mark your calendar September 21st, 2024. So if you have a business, friends, family, neighbors, uh, come on down. All right, year ahead. Bicycle Pedestrian Master Plan is coming, finally. It's been a while and in the works and that'll be nice. Um, I know the commissioners are all applauding there, so thank you for doing that. Uh, we're gonna see that here pretty soon. Uh, Taylor Boulevard Improvement Project. We were gonna have a new signal ready to go in at Civic there, um, but somebody crashed and knocked over the base of it and had ordered a whole new one uh, before they even got the new signal put in. So we're waiting on those parts and we, that should be coming up here shortly. Um, you'll, you'll be seeing that, I know, we put a new signal so the wind crashed and then while well, it's halfway built, somebody crashed in it. Okay, so. Uh, and then around town, you'll see a lot of different intersection and crosswalk improvements, a lot more ADA accessibility around town. We filled in a lot of gaps, especially uh, down on the library. Now it'll be contiguous sidewalks so people can get to and from the library. Uh, then around schools, you'll see improved sidewalks, some elevated, some restriped, some flashing stop signs, all those kind of things to improve child safety. Uh, City Hall is going through a fountain restoration. Um, Charles Moore, is that right, Sue? Did I get his name right? All right, Charles Moore is the architect on uh, the City Hall, and he actually has a foundation. A pretty famous architect at Sea Ranch and some other things. They have a foundation that's working with us to do the consulting on revamping it. So that whole fountain, it's a great idea that, oh cool, let's get a water fountain going out of City Hall, but then if you see it lately, it kinda needs a little help there. So <laughs> we're gonna work on that stuff. Um, and then our election's coming up. I wanted to take a moment to recognize our commissioners, committees, and board. And I think we have a few of them here in the crowd here tonight. So I apologize if I didn't, but if I can have our uh, planning commissioners and architectural review commissioners, please stand up. They are Chadwick Weiler, David Field, Diana Vavrick, uh, Will, Will Nelson, and you guys are all here. Thank you so much. We appreciate you being here with us today. Um, these are all the commissions. If you'd like to serve committee, you're like, wow, this sounds great. We want more Pleasant Hill. We have an opening or two on a couple of these, so reach out to the city website, and we'd love your participation in helping the city go. Connect your city. A lot of people are like, oh, I didn't know about that. And I'm like, okay, well, open your mailbox, read Outlook. Uh, the second one, <laughs> I 
I know that's, that's tricky right there. Um, kudos to our staff who puts the Outlook out. It's pretty very informative. Um, the second slide is an app on your phone called Ask P Hill, or Ask Phil as we call it. A-S-K-P-H-I-L-L. -L. Um, download that, you can report something. You see graffiti, you see a pothole. Whatever you see around town, you want to report that in. That's a great way. So you get those people that like, oh, I'm going to go to Ranson Reyes or next door and trash the city. Well, just open your app and put it in. We'll fix it. So, um, you know, if you see it first, let us know. We do have next door, uh, Instagram, X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, and Facebook. And if you haven't signed up for Nixle, Nixle is emer emergency communications. This is one of the things we did a town hall meeting with the neighbors of Sherman Acres, and we just realized that a lot of people hadn't signed up for the Nixle emergency alerts, so they weren't really sure what was going on, so we're trying to be more proactive and really pushing the Nixle. Some of you may have got it yesterday about the plane crash, uh, about the street closures, if you signed up for that, so you knew that there was, okay, don't go over there, there's a plane crash, okay? So, um, how to connect with us if you don't hit us on social media. I threw a fax up there, just, you know, a little human, but uh, there's our direct line, there's our address, here's our website, Pony Express, you can go there, ham radio, carrier pigeon, whatever you need, we're here for you. Um, connect with us, let us know what's going on, help us help you. We are a service organization to, you know, public services to here to help, try to help our city better. And with that, I will close it out and want to thank you so much for letting me be the mayor of this year. Thank you, Mayor Ann. Well, on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, State Pleasant Hill, the Pleasant Hill Recreation and Park District, and the City of Pleasant Hill, thank you all for joining us this morning as we've showcased for you why Pleasant Hill is truly at the center of everything. Have a great day. <laughs>